there's four areas I uh, I think that the the website really um, works for us. Um, the the first one is is really mostly administrative. Um, the second area, which Meet is going to focus on after me, um, so I'm only going to cover very briefly, is uh, how the website helps us to promote ourselves uh, independently. Um, as Andrew's already mentioned uh, a little bit about, um, it's a really important mechanism for us to be able to communicate events, activities, uh, to all the membership and to other people as well. And then the website also has a, a whole load of very useful content um, that we can use to help develop ourselves, that is useful for reference, and also um, is, as Andrew's already mentioned, it's really useful to appear uh, with clients. So let's have a look at the first two areas quite briefly. The website has over 500 pages on it. Now, a lot of those are members' pages, but it is a very big site. And, and uh, what we use the website for is we use it a lot to help us um, save on administrative costs through doing things like um, signing up and renewing membership. Um, but it also helps us bring in revenue, um, and in particular, things like the uh, the supplier directory. Uh, jumped on one, so we'll just jump back there. So most of the time, we um, try and ensure that our uh, access to most of the site is open and that's a, an active decision that, that we've made so because we want to encourage people customers potential members um, suppliers to come and use the site as much as possible but there are some things where we need to ensure that people log on there's, there's the, the admin stuff, like the annual fee. There's actually updating your particular information, which you should only be the, the only people who could do that. There's a little bit of member-only content, but actually probably the most important area that you, you need to have logged on to be able to access is the suppliers directory. And we have over 40 suppliers now on the directory. There's a bit of a trick um, to um, logging on because we do issue a couple of cookies to members which control whether you can see the suppliers directly or not. And in fact, if you put your tool on the website, and that means that you need to be able to log in. And if you've logged in, then you can see uh, suppliers uh, in this uh, right-hand area rather than featured members. If you're seeing a featured member, that means you haven't logged on. But it does remember you don't have to log on every time to see the supplier directory. The um, we've got a highlight here where you'll see the suppliers button. Um, the supplier directory, I have to say, I use quite frequently because the number of my suppliers, just as Andrew mentioned earlier, are already advertising and it's a quick and easy way to find phone numbers and contact details. But it's a very rich um, source of relevant suppliers and includes things like transcription, video, field work. It doesn't replace the e-group because I'm sure we all then talk on the e-group about, well, uh, would you recommend somebody? But um, it's a very good starting place and, uh, as already been mentioned, it's a, an important source of revenue for us. So, promoting members, Midge is going to talk about this in detail at the moment, but as part of your membership, you have this resource available to you to promote yourself. We know from our uh, web data that if you put your name into something like Google, then the are very hard on the first page of a Google search. So it is very important that you use this showcase to really 
um, impress potential contacts. But with the profile information and the um, important part of the website, the heaviest traffic we get are in fact to uh, the Connect site. Um, and I know that every month, every single member gets a number of hits. And they're not all robots. We do get rare, very heavy traffic to individual member pages. Um, having a look onto more detailed areas, um, we've got a, a, an important source of telling everybody about what we're doing. And there's various ways of getting to as the latest content and the latest events. When you go to the members page, we also make sure that features the latest content, latest events, latest magazine articles. Or you can go straight to the magazine or event articles themselves. And um, what we're um, doing is gradually improving this uh, content. I'm just wondering why my navigation is there. There we go. And one thing we've just added to the uh, events page is um, a, a calendar for the year. And in fact, it will be a rolling calendar. So that any time you can go to the front events page and you'll see um, the dates and locations for uh, our, our next events. At the moment, the only thing that you can automatically book through the website are these webinars. Um, shortly, we'll also be adding a, a facility where you can also add any events to your diary automatically using a, a .ics function. Um, you can also look back at what we've covered in the, in the past. So we've had all sorts of amazing speakers at the ICG. Um, such as Mark Heard, and you can get to information on past events um, through the archives at the bottom of this page, and that will also link you through to videos, papers, presents, and other relevant materials. The um, the indie um, Andrew has already talked about um, extensively, as you know, um, but. What we also have on the website, when we refreshed the website last year, we brought across all the content from the old site. Um, and so you can read not only the current information, but you can also uh, click on the, uh, the Indie button there, and that will take you to the archive of all the PDF copies. And there's lots of interesting stuff. And Alison is, is constantly working to improve it. Now. The other area, I could get the little navigation button back, um, which I'll just keep chatting, which is sometimes a little forgotten, is the ICG blog. And uh, this started up the old site. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, one of the, uh, if you do want to comment on a blog, then you do need to log in. Um, and the reason that you have to log in, you can read the blogs at any point when that logging in, but if you want to um, make a comment, you do have to log in. Um, and I think the, the reasons for that are probably fairly um, obvious. There is also a mass of useful stuff. Um, we, we have um, over five years worth of material and the content is continually being added to. On the front page of the resources site, you'll find um, links to the latest things. If you click on the links to the right hand side, then it will take you to lots of, of detailed content. And wherever possible, we also because I think we all know how frustrating it is. 
we're going to be revising this um, fairly shortly. As uh, Andrew mentioned, we have the knowledge sharing initiative underway. Um, so um, the, the, this will be changing a little, but uh, at the moment it, it's uh, very similar to its historic content. I'm not going to go through all the details, but just to highlight some um, perhaps things you might have missed and some new stuff. Um, as Andrew mentioned, uh, we have a series of expert guides just published um, just over a week ago. Is the latest commissioning qualitative research piece. Um, these um, guides, and we've also actually reissued the Do It Yourself guide um, in the new ICG logo, so it's been um, slightly updated as well, and more expert guides will be coming along. For those of you who wonder why we don't put them in PowerPoint, we do them in PDF because that means everybody can download them. And I think we all know about version control issues on PowerPoint. So we try and make it as portable and as accessible as possible. Um, but um, lots of good content here. And the commissioning qualitative research is actually a, a fun as well as a relevant read. The, um, the, an area that I found very helpful when I uh, started up was the, um, the area to help you uh, run your consultancy. It was rather hidden on our old site. And one of the things we did with the, uh, the new site uh, was to uh, improve the layout so that everything was much more accessible. Um, for some reason, I'm not advancing my slides at the moment. With, ah, there we go, of course, two, two forward and one back. So running your consultancy, I found really, really helpful. Um, and it's continuously being uh, added and extended and updated. But if you're starting up, or even if you're an experienced independent, there's lots of helpful material. Um, the uh, webinars like this, we're also publishing on the site. And, um, the what we we do is we, uh, we record these webinars and then they're available as a recording, so you can sit and watch them in your own time from the website. Uh, and we also put the presentations. Quite often, though, I think it's much more helpful to be able to listen to the presentations at the same time. And we're doing this not just for the webinars, but as much as possible, we're also recording all the events and presentations um, for the ICG and, and putting them on the site so that if you miss an event, then it's there for you to catch up, especially as independents. Um, but you also have nice flexible diaries, which means we can sit and look at these things. Um, what we also try and do as much as possible is crossing the content so uh, you can quickly zip around and find things easy. The um, other area that uh, Ben's going to talk about in a moment is, is the whole section on the e-group and um, it, we're gradually expanding this with FAQs but it's also got guides to the etiquette and what to do, what not to do, and some interesting stuff on the history of the e-group as well. So it's worth an explore in that area too. Uh, the website also contains um, key contacts, and I've just shown you the top level here. So you've got the, sort of the general ICG addresses. All of those addresses actually go to a person. Sometimes they go to several people. Um, but you can also find via this page the, the contact for all the committee members. And we also have a page that includes the useful organization, MRBA, the MRS, um, Business Intelligence Group, and indeed things like the Research Club as well. 
So that's a very quick zip through the, um, the website as it, it is today, some of the key areas. Do explore it. There's lots of useful stuff on there. And um, we're constantly looking to improve the site. It's always a work in pro progress. So please do let us have ideas and suggestions for things you'd like to see added to the website. Um, and we will do our best to make sure that they happen. Thank you.